that actually stemmed from our conversation about whether AI is going to kill all of us. And you, we've discussed this kind of spreading of intelligence through really all space that in practice, it just seems that things get more complicated. Things are more complicated than the story of, well, if you build a thing that's plus one intelligence, that thing will be able to build the thing that's plus two intelligence and plus three intelligence, and that will be exponential. It'll become uh, more intelligent exponentially faster and so on until it completely destroys everything. Um, but, you know, that intuition might still not be so simple, but it might still care, carry validity. And there's two interesting trajectories here. One, a super intelligence system remains in rural proximity to humans, to yep. where we're like, holy crap, this thing is really intelligent. Uh, let's elect the president. And then there could be perhaps more terrifying intelligence that uh, starts moving away. They might be around us now that are moving far away in Rulio space, but they're still sharing physical resources with us, right? Yes, yes. And so they can rob us of those physical resources and destroy humans just kind of casually. Yeah. Just, just- uh, Like nature could. Like nature could. But it seems like there's something unique about AI systems where um, there is a this kind of exponential growth, like the way, well, Sorry, n nature has so many things in it. One of the things that nature has, which is very interesting, are viruses, for example. Mm -hmm. There is systems within nature that have this kind of exponential effect. And that terrifies us humans because again, you know, there's only 8 billion of us and you can just kind of, it's not that hard to just kind of whack them all real yeah. quick. So, uh, I mean, is that something you think about? That, yeah, that, I thought about that. Yes, <laughs> the threat of it. I mean, are you as concerned about it as uh, somebody like Eliezer Yarkovsky, for example? Just big, big, painful, negative effects of AI on society. You know, no, but perhaps that's because I'm intrinsically an optimist. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that there are things, I, I think the thing that one, you know, one sees is there's going to be this one thing and it's going to just zap everything. Yeah. Somehow, you know, I maybe I have faith in computational irreducibility, so to speak, mm -hmm. that there's always unintended little corners that, you know, it's just like somebody says, I'm going to, oh, I don't know, somebody has some, some bioweapon and they say, we're going to release this and it's going to do all this harm. But then it turns out it's more complicated than that because, you know, the kind of, some humans are different and, you know, the exact way it works is a little different than you expect. It's something where sort of the, the, the great big, you you know, you smash the thing with something, you know, you, the asteroid collides with the earth yeah. and it kind of, you know, and yes, you know, the earth is cold for two years or something and, you know, then lots of things die, but not everything dies. And it's, you know, there's, there's usually, I mean, I, I kind of, th this is in a sense, the sort of story of computational irreducibility. There are always unexpected corners. There are always unexpected consequences. And I don't think that they kind of whack it over the head with something and then it's all gone is, you know, that can obviously happen. The earth can be swallowed up in a black hole or something. And then it's kind of presumably, presumably all over. Um, the, uh, but, but, you know, I think this question of, of what, you know, what, what do I think the realistic paths are? I think that there will be sort of an increasing, I mean, the, the people have to get used to phenomena like computational irreducibility. There's an idea that we built the machines so we can understand what they do and we're, we're going to be able to control what happens. Well, that's not really right. Now the question is, is the result of that lack of control going to be that the machines kind of conspire and sort of wipe us out? Maybe just because I'm an optimist, I don't tend to think that that's, you know, that's in the cards. I think that the, you know, as a realistic thing, I, I suspect, you know, what will sort of emerge maybe is kind of an ecosystem of the AIs, just as, you know, again, I, I don't really know. I mean, this is something it's it's hard to it's hard to be clear about what will happen. Um, I mean, I think that the, you know, there are there are a lot of sort of details of, 
you know, what could we do? What systems in the world could we connect an AI to? You know, I have to say, I was just a couple of days ago, I was working on this uh, chat GPT plugin kit that we have for Waltham Language, okay? Where you can, you know, you can create a plugin and it runs Waltham Language code mm -hmm. um, and it can run Waltham Language code back on your own computer. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, I can just make it, you know, I can tell ChatGPT, create a piece of code and then just run it on my computer. And I'm like, you know, that, that sort of personalizes for me the what could, what could possibly go wrong, so to speak. Was that exciting or scary, that possibility? It was a little bit scary, actually, because it's kind of like, like I realize I'm, I'm, I'm delegating to the AI, just write a piece of code. You know, you're in charge, write a piece of code, run it on my computer. And pretty soon, all my files. Can that's be like deleted. that's like a uh, that's like Russian roulette, but like much more complicated yes, version of that. Yes, yes, right. That's a good drinking game. I don't know. Uh, so, <laughs> well, uh, right. I mean, that, that's why. <laughs> that's how much you're that, drinking? That, that, it's, it's an interesting question. Then, if, if you do that, right? Yeah. What is the sandboxing that you should have? And that's sort of a that's a a version of of that question for the world. That is, as soon as you put the AIs in charge of things, you know how much. How many constraints should there be on these systems before you put the AIs in charge of all the weapons and all these, you know, all these different kinds of systems? Well, here's the fun part about sandboxes: is uh, the AI knows about them and has the tools to uh, crack them. Look, the fundamental problem of computer security yeah. is computational irreducibility. Yes, because the fact is, any sandbox is never any, you know, it's never going to be a perfect sandbox. If you want the system to be able to do interesting things. I mean, this this is the problem that's happened, the generic problem of computer security, that as soon as you have your you know, firewall that is sophisticated enough to be a universal computer, that means it can do anything. And so long as if you find a way to poke it so that you actually get it to do that universal computation thing, that's the way you kind of crawl around and get it to do the thing that it wasn't intended to do. And that's sort of a an, another version of computational irreducibility is you can you know you can kind of you get it to do the thing you didn't expect it to do so to speak. There's so many interesting possibilities here that manifest themselves from the compute computational irreducibility here. That it's just so many things can happen because in digital space things move so quickly. You can have a chatbot. You can have a piece of code that you can basically have ChatGPT generate viruses accidentally yeah. or on purpose. And they, uh, digital viruses. Yes. And uh, they could be brain viruses too. They they convince, kind of like uh, phishing emails. Yes. They can convince you of stuff. Yes. And, and no doubt you can, you know, in a sense, we've had the, the loop of the machine learning loop of making things that convince people of things. Yeah. It's surely going to get easier to do. Yeah. And, you know, then what does that look like? Well, it's again, you know, we humans are, you know, we're, this is a new environment for us. And admittedly, it's an environment which a little bit scarily is is changing much more rapidly than, I mean, you know, people worry about, you know, climate change is going to happen over hundreds of years. And, you know, the environment is changing, but the environment for, you know, in the, the kind of digital environment might change in, in six months. 